I mean, yeah, it took forever. It's like so delicate. Uh, like you really had to like take your time and like I had to go super slow with it. But yeah, it's all paper. So it's like, it's super, super delicate. FSTV starts now. Hey everyone, it's Walker and Nick at Full Spectrum Laser and welcome to FSTV Live on Wednesdays. That's right, it's Wednesday, it's 4 o'clock. We're here at Full Spectrum Laser, so you know what time it is. It's time for the best laser show on the internet on a 4 o'clock on a Wednesday. We're really getting down to the nuts and bolts on this yeah, one, too right? we got a lot of competition out there in the internet webs uh, with all the different competition. Uh, we got to really get specific on what we're the best at. Yeah. But at 4 o'clock spot for lasers on a Wednesday, that's us. Yeah. All right, so we got a cool show for you today. It's going to um, be a lot of Nick talking. Which a little bit of Nick talking, yet. Yeah. Uh, we're going to actually, uh, this this week, a little bit of Nick talk. Next week, going to be all you. Because yeah. this week, we're going to talk about uh, Illustrator a bit. Uh, that's the first thing we're going to kind of get into. we got a few other things we're going to talk about. Uh, specifically, we're going to show how you can do a very specific, uh, cool trick in Illustrator. So you can do single line engravings. Uh, and then we're going to look at some more weekend projects that Walker and I have been working on. Yeah, those are my yeah. favorite. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into our first segment which is designing with Illustrator uh, for your laser cutter. I'm just going to watch it. Okay. So uh, here we are. We have a Illustrator new uh, tab open. Uh, now what I've done, and this is a, a kind of good uh, practice to get into, um, my work area is 20 by 12 because that's the size. That's awesome of my laser. So that's a good way to kind of keep track of how much uh, material you're using. Now what you can do is you can have multiple work areas. You can have with multiple 20 by 12 areas so you can kind of see how much uh, material you need to use. Uh, so you can set up your work area either by the size of your work bed or by the size of material you'll be cutting on. But now, how, do you, how do you scale it? Just down there? Oh yeah, you can just, uh, in Illustrator, you just grab this uh, uh, little uh, tool right here. It's called the Artboard Tool and then you can either uh, scale it by dragging the corner or you can type it up in the top here um, the size you want to use. So the first thing we wanted to show you is just some basic uh, functions uh, with this uh, uh, program. Now the two things we use the most is the image trace uh, function and the uh, pathfinder. Now pathfinder will show you first, uh, let's say you're going to design a uh, personalized wrench. Uh, I don't know why you need a wooden or an acrylic wrench, but that's just a good okay. shape. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a uh, rectangle, right? Now, what's great is it doesn't really matter size right now. We just need it to kind of get a good shape, and then we can scale it to how big uh, that we need it. Uh, so this will be like the handle. Uh, now, thank you for letting me know that. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any question, now that probably looks just a little thick for a wrench handle. Um, we're just going to make that uh, half as wide. All right, now the, this is kind of where it gets interesting. Now we're going to take the uh, ellipse tool, uh, and uh, another little trick is if you want the center of your object to be where your cursor is, you can hold Shift and Option, and you'll actually draw from where your cursor is. So we'll take um, one of these down at this end, and then um, we're actually going to put one of these on each end. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and throw it down here. Now, Basically what I have here is three separate objects, right? And because of the locking I have on, it's going to just place itself, intersect it perfectly there. Now, I'm going to select these three objects. Now, technically these are three different compound objects, but by using the Pathfinder up here, I'm going to press this Unite uh, tool right here, and that's going to combine all three of those things together. Now, if you didn't do that, it would have cut five pieces, right? Absolutely. And that's kind of the thing you have to remember when you're designing with Illustrator is you really want simple uh, compound paths. You don't want to mm -hmm. layer a bunch of things together and group them. You really want to um, combine the object and make the object uh, a single path. It's a lot different than when you're designing for print. When you don't have to worry about layers, you can hide things. Right? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but we'll talk about that in just a second with the, with the rasterization. No, but in the head it's okay. But yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, so now we want to take away uh, the center of that so we can use like the hex uh, part of a lock, right? So we just use the polygon tool. We're going to pick six sides and there is a polygon. I should look at my screen instead of the screen up there where I'm projecting. This is a little hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to place this right here in the center. Now you're probably wondering, well, you added those shapes together. How do you take them apart? Well, real simply, uh, what you'll do is 
uh, once you have that just where you need it, uh, you'll select those two objects and then the same in the Pathfinder, you'll use the next tool over which is the minus the front tool. Now you can also minus the back if they're layered differently but basically you want to use that minus tool to separate. Now you'll notice that this is all one uh, compound path. Uh, now you have a, the closed section of your wrench down there and then what we'll do is we'll take this um, Ooh, you're going to do an open end close. Uh, open end on this end, yeah, pretty That's fancy. Cool. So we'll take this down here and we'll put it on here and technically I think wrenches kind of look like that when you do open end and yeah, so I think we'll, if you extend the guy a bit um, I just don't want to lose the um, angle of that back side of it oh, okay. so is this real strong just yeah, super strong one I get what you're saying so it's not as fat on the back yeah yeah not a tool designer to be honest with you mm -hmm. um, now this uh, bad boy has a couple things uh, that we can do to kind of just make it a little smoother now I'm gonna use the sub select tool and grab these nodes in the middle and I'm just gonna give that just a little bit of a rounded shape there on that and look at that we got ourselves a little wrench we designed right here in Illustrator a compound path um, this will be read really well uh, in RE3 and be really really easy to use now if we're going to engrave this, let's say we're going to do this for a logo and we wanted to put some text down here real quick. We said uh, Walker's Tool Shed and we wanted to show everyone whose tool shed this is now. Tool it's with tools. <laughs> exactly. Now, <laughs> Walker's Tool Shed, that's a font now, but what we want to do is we want to right click on this and we actually want to create outlines. Now what that's going to do is turn all those uh, pieces of text actually into vector lines rather than uh, text data. So that's going to be another thing that's going to help you out in Illustrator, but now engraving. So technically right now if we were to drag just this into um, Illustrator, uh, what it would do is it would, or into RE3, excuse me, it would just engrave the black areas, right? Yeah, so it's going to engrave the wrench and the text. Absolutely. So let's say you didn't want the wrench to be engraved, you just wanted the wrench to be cut out and the tool, uh, Walker's tool shed to be engraved. Well, what we typically do is, is we have a bit of rules with our colored lines. So red for me when I design is always cut. So red is the cut line. Now I'm just going to, just because I got a little OCD on sizing and spacing, we're going to give that just a little bit of an adjustment, maybe not that big of an adjustment, just so it looks a little, clean. a little clean. Okay, so with the red line now, and actually if you want to make sure this, if you're going to engrave this, you can actually make this line yellow, which when you drag that into RE3, RE3's uh, black and white threshold won't pick up the yellow line, it'll just pick up the black letters, which will enable you to engrave even better. Now the other thing you can keep in mind, if you have a black rectangle, and we'll just make this one real quick. Oops, that's the f boom. Now, with this, we're going to send this all the way to the back. If we drag this on top of this, uh -oh. now we've got some things going on. Now, mm -hmm. if we engrave this, the machine's not going to read that there's a full black box and then a white thing. It's going to see all of this all at once. So when you're engraving something like this, you actually will have the, this will, would look really cool, I think. You would have the um, wrench sticking out and then the yeah. letters engraved. Um, this is a cool way to do uh, what a lot of people call 3D engraving <coughs> or relief engraving. Where That's you, technically a high relief, right? Yeah, high relief. That's uh, exactly how we would call it. Um, sometimes it's referred to in forums as uh, more of a 3D thing. Uh, the way you can play with this is you can start using like different colors and shades of gray to have different levels uh, be engraved as you go. Uh, so those are kind of some things to uh, keep in mind as you're designing with Illustrator. If you have questions about Illustrator, put them down in the comments or leave them right now. We actually have one of our newest team members in at, during his first show. Uh, we'll introduce you to uh, him next week. Uh, but Tim, do we have any uh, shout outs? Anybody watching right now? That we yeah, we got a bunch of people. Nice. Um, the tutorials, I think, get them. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Jeanette. And Jeanette. Jeanette. Kurt. John. Brooke. Brooke. Jim, How's it going? Jeff, Brooke. The Ray. Brooke? Probably. That'd be pretty cool. Looks like we got, um, oh yeah, Brooke. Uh, Miss Reeland. Hi, Brooke. How you doing? Nice you. Every day, Brooke. It's not a day we don't talk about uh, it. Okay. Sure. What else we have? Um, Renee, Jeff, Jim, uh, Brooke. I, for some reason, all the comments won't pop Jim up Robinson. over here. What's up? And Randall. And Randall. 
Boom. Um, I guess that's all we can see. So, <clears throat> what's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in. If you got questions, put them down in the comments. Uh, we will uh, get to those right away. <clears throat> uh, so, we just covered Illustrator. Just covered Illustrator a little bit, but we're going to go back to Illustrator real quick and show you a um, one of my favorite tricks in Illustrator, and that is using single line uh, mm -hmm. text, which is something you like to use uh, when you're vector marking text, yeah. right? I love it because it's very fast. Very, very fast. So, if you're doing uh, text markings uh, and you're doing a bunch of them and they're going to be small, large text, uh, it's not the best for, but if you're doing small text, meaning that the, uh, the width of the actual text would be about the width of the laser head. This is a great tool. We'll jump back into Illustrator real quick and show you how to do that. Okay, so we want to have a mm. single li oops, line text example. So right now, if we take this and we'll just copy and paste <coughs> this uh, other one right here. Um, if, and we'll just make this as big as possible. That way we can see. If we grab this right now, these are not vector lines. Uh, and what we'll do if we hit um, create outlines, it's actually going to take the inside and outside line. And if you're going to try to draw this, this is kind of what it would look like when you uh, when you write it with a laser. It's not bad, but it's not ideal. You kind of want that to be a single line. So what you want to do is you want to grab a font that's nice and thin, something that has uh, like one that I really like is this uh, basic align uh, font, which is a pretty uh, standard one if you have Mac. Uh, you can also get this on like things like 1001 fonts, whatever. But you want to look for something that has a very very thin uh, font line like this. And I'm just going to make this nice and big. Uh, so then what you want to do next is uh, you want to go up to object, excuse me, and then you just want to rasterize the text. Now this is different than creating outlines because it's actually going to create bitmap data for it. So once you rasterize it, you're going to treat this a lot like you would uh, tracing uh, an object you drug in. So now that you have this rasterized here, you can actually see that your tracing options are up. So you'll just go up and select image trace, and then what you're going to want to do is actually select line art. And what that line art image trace is going to do is actually give you single line vectors for each one of these, um, uh, I guess, uh, characters of the font here. And just like that, boom, you have single line text uh, using uh, that example. That's amazing. Now, all you got to do is expand that. And as you can see, when you come in, these are single vector lines coming in. Some of the X's obviously looked just a little weird, but as you can see, uh, this is just a single line for the T uh, made mm. uh, to or mark very, very quickly uh, with vector marks. I think this would be great to add your logo really small, just anywhere on your project. Absolutely. This is how I do uh, a lot of like the branding on projects is I'll just use this real simple. Uh, it's nice to put a little message on it uh, and then uh, signature. I actually have my uh, personal signature um, like traced so that it looks like the laser just drew that's my awesome. signature, which I think is a pretty cool thing too. Yeah, uh, so that's a little trick in Illustrator to use single line uh, vectoring uh, with using Illustrator. Uh, we can show you a similar thing in Inkscape next week, uh, which is what we'll dive into using Inkscape uh, to yes. design. Now, a couple things to kind of just remember: use different color vector lines as you're designing. So, if you want to yes. mark, cut, or whatever, uh, and then try to have a, a system that you kind of stay consistent with. So, if uh, red is always cut for you. Stick with that nonstop. If yellow is mark, if black is a dark mark, uh, whatever it is, uh, try to keep a simple um, kind of system you use so that uh, the same color vector lines always do the same thing in your software. It's a good point. Pretty good yeah. point. All right. <coughs> I so, can't wait to do the same thing with uh, Inkscape next week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do we have anything to check in with the marquee this week? Um, I, thought I think we're going to show, yeah, um, which, you know what I think I did? I don't think I put that file on this computer. I think That's it's okay. We'll go next week. We'll show you guys uh, the uh, some of our Illustrator stuff for the marquee next week. Uh, Walker's been doing a great job on the kind of Art Deco design for the outside. It's It looks really great. It's uh, pretty per amazing. Yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Um, so we'll show you some more on the marquee next week. But we both worked on some stuff over the weekend, and we wanted to show you one more uh, set of what we've been working on in this week's edition of Weekend Builds. Charles gets an A plus that, for that, that intro. That was too yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> well like played, that. Charles. That was fun and ridiculous, just the way we like it. Um, excellent. So, um, Walker, what did you work on this weekend? Um, so, I did a project for my slingshot. I just got a slingshot, and I started making parts for it. And they call this thing the wind deflector, since it is an open De Does it deflect wind? Yeah. It, uh, it does that. And it's an open cockpit, and it's supposed to, I don't know, if this is true, but when you're at a stop after running a long day, that the exhaust doesn't come through to the cockpit as much, 
and that you can actually hear the passenger better. Oh, so it's like split. a wind deflector here in between. In between yeah. the two, and we got a video for it. Cool, let's check it out. Oh, look at that, yeah, so it's like that uh, panel there in between the two seats. Yeah, I built brackets for it uh, above onto the, what they call the sling shade, and brackets on the bottom. Now, a lot of people sell those without the bottom brackets, and wind... They rattle? Yeah, wind yeah. can rattle on there. And they also have a huge gap between the body panel and the actual window, which I think is completely ugly, defeats the purpose. So I wanted a two millimeter gap all the way around it. And to keep that from moving and rubbing at three millimeters, I needed the bottom bracket. Nice, that bottom bracket looks great. Thanks, man. I wanted to design it to go with the body of the same shot. Yeah, it looks uh, completely seamless. It looks like uh, something that they designed uh, for it in mind. That's what's great about yeah. the slingshot, because anybody can make parts for yeah. it, because it practically falls apart when you drive it. <laughs> that's, that's nice to hear. Nice yeah. to know. Uh, well, that's really cool. That's uh, made with acrylic? Yeah, that's just a 3 mil plexi tinted that I get locally. get huge sheets for a lot cheaper than if you were to even buy on Amazon. Yeah. Um, what did you work on? Um, I worked on this really cool uh, mandala oh, light thing. Oh, you're going to one-up me right I'm now. I'm not going to one-up yeah, you, but I got a little yeah. video here if you want to check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, is it just feels like it's kind of like, uh, I don't say alive, but kind of has yeah. like a little bit. No, that, that is by far the best thing you've ever made, and it's amazing. Thanks, man. Uh, I think it's the coolest thing ever. Thank God I don't have kids. Yeah. They're taking <laughs> a lot of offense to that. Um, uh -huh. it, now, only if it moved, that would be the only thing, but that That's would be overkill. I'll be honest. Well, it's a little, maybe, but I think a simple, slow movement, Spring. just like a little, uh, I'm playing with that. Yeah. Um, yeah it's just. It's I know the motors. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's just a lot to, um, yeah. not to engineer, but like uh, the weight of like how much is going to spin. Mm -hmm. And the, the way I'm trying to go about it is having something float in the middle that spins. Yeah. Just kind of like, and just one sheet of acrylic maybe that spins and has that like, I don't know, we'll see what happens. We'll I, keep playing. I, I don't know, I think it's funny when we first met, uh, I was doing really artsy stuff and you were more into the engineering stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's kind of switched. Not that yours doesn't have engineering, yeah. but... That thing is so amazing, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, it feels a little, I guess it's way more fun to design like that than it is just like trying to make sure everything's square and perfect and aligned and yes. fits together. Uh, it's uh, Form and function comes together. It's yeah, when you can amazing. do that, it's actually, that's probably the best feeling. Like when you have something that like create, it is beautiful because really the things I'm most proud of, like the things that everyone notices about that mm -hmm. are not the things I'm most proud about. No, it's no. like hiding the LED lights, having like the cables fit, like uh, yeah. the plug that f perfectly fits like in the that, bottom. The cleanliness of the design. Yeah, that was the thing that's like, 
like to me, I guess the most rewarding and really the best thing about using a laser because like I couldn't do that with a bandsaw, I couldn't do that with a skill saw, I couldn't do that with a oh, knife. Like you'd a, be missing fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd need a laser to do that kind of precision. And luckily, uh, with the RE three and the Pro Series laser, it's really really easy to do. Uh, yeah, I'm still blown away. By Thanks that. so much, man. I appreciate it. I, I didn't. I saw the videos, but I didn't see it at night. That's like yeah, the night. Uh, I was kind of saving it for like the uh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. Goodness. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, if you got uh, your project you'd like to submit and show off, uh, there's a way to do that. Just submit it with the hashtag MadeWithFSL and you'll even enter into our monthly contest where you can win a $250 gift certificate to FSL and a lens kit which is valued at $250 and well. That's $500 in prizes. That's pretty good. And you get sticky notes that say good job. Yeah, those are specially from Charles. He writes them by hand. Uh, Walker is actually mailing out his Llama Awards to mm -hmm. a couple of award winners that we're still uh, waiting to receive. Well, what's the Llama Award stand for? Uh, Legendary Laser Awesome Mega Award. Award. Oh, there you go. I think there's maybe another letter in there. I don't know, but it's incredible. I know yes. that. I know it's really Amazing. good. I know it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we got some other things going on. We still have an amazing sale going on with our fume extractors. The FSL 300, you can get $1,000 off the FSL 300 uh, fume extractor. This bad boy is cool. Comes with a remote if you want to turn it on and off uh, remotely. Has a, a few different modes uh, for air suction. Uh, has a set of uh, filters that take out not only bad smells, but particulates and harmful things in the air. Uh, you can also get a pre-filter to go with this, uh, which will help out a lot. This will take out uh, particulates even before it hits your filters in your uh, fume extractor. That sale is only going to go on for a little bit. Act now, $1,000 off. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, that thing sucks. A lot of fumes. <laughs> ah, your you're a punny I did guy. that one for Scott. Punny guy. Uh, Scott, if you're watching, just for you, just man. For you, man. Just for you. Um, I wonder why I can't see all the comments. Would you have an idea on that? Well, let's ask Tim Snow. Tim Snow, you're the man. king of the north. The new guy. The new guy. <laughs> Whoops, don't want to hear us in uh, stereo. Uh, uh, I did have a couple of questions. Questions coming questions. in, yeah. Um, so the first one was uh, if the, I'm assuming the single line um, vectors could be done in RE3. It's a great question. Um, say it again. That comes from Kim, this Kim Fields. Wants to know if the uh, the single line can be done in RE3. Uh, technically, uh, no. Uh, yeah. So the image trace in RE3 is very elementary. The image trace in Illustrator in Inkscape, like. Uh, is just through the roof. So they that's have a they do. yeah. That's basically what the uh, s entire software is designed to do. So in in Illustrator, it's really the specific type of trace where you're doing a line drawing image trace. So while you can still do light tracing and image capture in RE3, you really need to use Illustrator or Inkscape, which are specifically designed with a very strong engine to do that type of tracing. So while you can do some forms of that in RE3, you can't do this very specific. That's why we showed you in uh, Illustrator. Yeah, and we'll be showing how to do gears and stuff in Inkscape. Everything has, you know, you need the right tool for the right job. Always. That's a great, uh, great point, Walker. And I think you bring a good point that, like, each one of those softwares has, like, their own little little bits of difference that makes it uh, look great. Uh, yeah. We had something for Charles, actually, coming in from, um, I th believe it was Jim. Uh, Jim Robinson says, and Charles, this is directly towards you with a bullet. You ready for this, man? Your video and sound are much better. As a matter of fact, it looks very professional. Cool. It's like we get paid for those. <laughs> Nothing but net. That's 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 from that's Steph Curry distance. That's from that's a couple couple steps back. All right, uh, Jeanette, apologize for making fun of those stupid things you made from your girlfriend last week. Oh, I didn't mean those really cute Chihuahua. Oh, she hangers. apologized. Yeah, she, I talked about that like a week later. How yeah, uh, really very sweet. Uh, that was very cool. Those Chihuahua hangers. Lovely. Yeah, so much fun. Um, I think anyone with a small dog would get a kick out of that because I mean, those little ears, unmistakable who that belongs to. Yeah, you know. Now, I'm telling them on NT hashtag. No. <laughs> uh, Renee, thanks so much for tuning in. Alan Boyer, thanks for watching. Uh, Jim, as always, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, John, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, both projects were great. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate it. I thought uh, his slingshot stuff was great. And you as don't well. need to talk it up because yours was amazing. What, man? Like, it can I, still I appreciate it, though. I can still appreciate it. I'm going to put that on the back of my slingshot. Appreciate it? No, you're a mandala. Speaking of the mandala, Renee was asking if you were going to make Project File available. For the mandala? Absolutely not. 
That, that's yeah. your personal, yeah. you're selling those. Uh, yeah, I'm actually trying to sell those. Uh, so, well, I do appreciate, uh, yeah, that's nothing I would, uh, that's uh, probably. It took you, what, weeks? Weeks, yeah, of like, uh, of just as I'd get home, I'd sit in like uh, my laptop on my de like uh, lap, whatever, mm -hmm. and like the TV would be on or dinner or whatever, and I would just like do one other layer, or I would do like a section of a layer, and just, then honestly, I had to cut it twice just to get it to like, do it to, right. like to look right, because you had to kind of cut and test. It's a lot of work that goes into making project files. Yeah. That's why we have over a hundred project files online for free. Yeah, designed by both you and me. Absolutely. So, so uh, I got a hundred and I think a hundred and two free mm -hmm. files in total. And uh, uh, all the large projects we're doing will they be available as well? Uh, like so like forty-five uh, day builds. Yeah, the forty-five day builds we're actually going to put on there. So those are the ones we're designed specifically here. Uh, like uh, a lot of that Walker did here while he was at work uh, uh, for the design. So we'll put those type of things up that you'll be able to personalize yourself or even downscale and do something that's uh, you know like a scale model of what we've done. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, you could still piece it together. You yeah, absolutely. With a small laser. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you can imagine like if you scaled it down to three mil, it mm -hmm. would uh, most of those pieces would fit in the muse anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd have little doggy door marquee. Yeah, that actually, that would be pretty cool. Going a with little the marquee. In my Etsy store. Boom, there it is. Uh, so we have the the hashtag my dog is the best Etsy store uh, coming oh, yeah. here soon. The uh, Chihuahua Castle. The Chihuahua Castle, that'll be a good one. Okay, it looks like Randall tuned in now real quick. Uh, so at Randall. the end here, Randall, thanks so much for watching. Brooke, again, thanks for watching, darling. I always appreciate yes. that. Uh, Jeff nice. Hayes, uh, sorry, jumped over you, sir. Hello, the Juniors National. Oh, Juniors National. Uh, Jeff, I uh, hope everyone's doing well there. Um, Jeanette apologizes again. And Kurt, uh, says Kurt. Hi, Walker. Kurt and Nick. Nick, yeah, that's us. Oh, she would just oh. say, hi, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> just diss you completely? Yeah. That'd be fun. All right, well, that's all we got for this week. Again, remember, uh, join the contest uh, by submitting your laser projects using that hashtag. We've got that great fume extractor sale. And next week, we're talking Inkscape and uh, how Walker uses it to get really cool gears and other stuff made uh, inside of there. So, so yeah. until next time, keep making. That was refreshing. Wow. If you want some more refreshing TV shows on YouTube, you can subscribe to us right here, or you can watch more of those shows right here. Someone have a towel?